biology. Now let's look at the nitrogen cycle. So for the nitrogen cycle, simply we see that, as you can look at the diagram, so we are cycling nitrogen into the atmosphere from the atmosphere and into the body of different organisms. And then after the bodies of different organisms, the nitrogen is taken back into the atmosphere. Now that gives us the basis and now the definition of nitrogen cycle, whereby you will say that in nitrogen cycle, this is the circulation of nitrogen from the atmosphere and into the body of different organisms and then back into the atmosphere. That is now nitrogen cycle. But why should we study nitrogen cycle? What is the importance of nitrogen in the first place? So the importance of nitrogen is that nitrogen is one of the raw materials which is used for the formation of protein in the bodies of living organisms. So for the nitrogen we see that in protein formation it is very much important because it helps in the formation of now the different amino acids which are now the building blocks of the protein. So in this nitrogen cycle we see that it mainly involves different processes whereby the first process in nitrogen fixation we have nitrogen fixing. After nitrogen fixing, the next process is now ammonification. And then after ammonification, we have nitrification. Then after nitrification, we have now the denitrification. As you can look at the diagram, so we have the diagram and you can see the arrows from nitrogen into the atmosphere. We have ammonification, nitrification, then denitrification, and then the nitrogen can still be taken by the plant or can be circulated straight into the atmosphere. So let's begin with the first process now in this case, whereby the first process we said it is nitrogen fixing. So this nitrogen fixing can be done through two main, um, two main agents, whereby the first one, it can be done through now the organisms which are found in the environment. So for the organisms which can facilitate this process of nitrogen fixing, first of all, we have the bacteria uh, and the algae. So for the bacteria which facilitate the process of nitrogen fixing, we have the rhizobium bacteria which are found on the root nodules in leguminous plants. Apart from the rhizobium bacteria, we also have now the azotobacter and also the clostridium bacteria which facilitate this process of nitrogen fixing. Now apart from the bacteria, we have also the algae whereby we have the blue algae. Apart from the algae, we also have anabaena. Apart from that, we can also have chlorella and the nostoc which are the algae which facilitate this process of nitrogen fixing. So apart from organisms, we also have now lightening. So lightening can also facilitate in the process of nitrogen fixing. But how does the lightening facilitate this process of nitrogen fixing? So you see that the high energy which is produced by the lightening during storms mainly forces atmospheric nitrogen to combine with oxygen. So remember in the previous class we studied and said that air comprises of different components whereby the first component, remember we said, we said that it is nitrogen which was 78%, oxygen which was 21% and many more. So the high energy from the lightning will now force the nitrogen from the atmosphere to combine with the oxygen to form nitrogen oxides. So after the formation of these nitrogen oxides, so this nitrogen oxide beats nitrogen 1, beats nitrogen 2, beats nitrogen 4. So these nitrogen oxides are now going to react with the rainwater. So if these nitrogen oxides react with rainwater, there is now going to be the formation of two acids, whereby the first acid is nitric acid. After nitric acid, the next acid is nitrous acid. So again, remember, if the nitrogen oxides are going to react with the rainwater, there's going to be the formation of two acids, which is nitric acid and also nitrous acid. So don't forget that. Now, this nitric acid and the nitrous acid are now going to decompose and further be converted to the nitrates, whereby these nitrates may be taken up by the plants in order to make the proteins. Now, after that, we now go to the next process, which is now ammonification. So after now nitrogen fixing is ammonification. So in this process of ammonification, we see that the, if plants and animals are going to decay, they're going to release ammonia gas into the soil. But how does this process exactly begin so that now these plants and animals die to release ammonia gas? So this process begins here. So plants are going to obtain nitrates from the soil. So if the plants obtain nitrates from the soil, so the body of the plant is going to have nitrates. Now, 
if an animal comes and feeds on this plant, so the animal is going to obtain the nitrate from the plant. If these two organisms are going to die, so their bodies, the protein inside their bodies is going to decompose to form now ammonia gas. And that is now this process of ammonification comes in. So again, remember how it begins. So it begins by the plant is obtaining the nitrates from the soil, directly from the soil. So after obtaining the nitrates, that nutrient, now the plant is going to have the nitrates. So if an animal feeds on this plant which has nitrates, so the animal also is going to obtain nitrates indirectly from this plant. So now the body of the plant, the body of the animal will now possess nitrates. Then remember these nitrates in these organisms is going to be used to make proteins. So if both of these organisms die, so if they die, they are going to decompose. And if these organisms are going to decompose, uh, they are going to decompose to form ammonia gas, whereby this ammonia gas is going to enter into the soil. Now this forms the basis of this ammonification process. After ammonification, we now go to the next process now, whereby the next process is nitrification process. So in this third process, which is nitrification, now we are going to deal with the ammonia gas in the previous stage. So in this process of nitrification now, this ammonia gas that was formed is going to be degenerated or is going to be reduced to form nitrites. That is why we call this process nitrification because we are reducing the ammonia gas to form the nitrites. So after this ammonia gas has been reduced to form the nitrites, we have now the different nitrifying bacteria which now convert this nitrite to nitrates. So again, remember, Ammonia gas has been reduced to form the nitrites. Now we have different bacteria which are now going to act on this nitrite and then convert it to the nitrates. These are the nitrifying bacteria. So an example of this nitrifying bacteria, we have the nitrosomonas and also we have the nitrobacter. So this bacteria, remember, they are going to convert the nitrite to now the nitrates. So the next step is now denitrification, whereby in this process of denitrification, uh, the nitrates are going to be reduced back to nitrites. As you can look at this diagram, so the nitrates are going to be reduced back to form the nitrates. So, uh, like after the nitrates have been reduced to nitrites, they are now reduced to ammonia gas. After they have been reduced to ammonia gas, this ammonia gas will now then be reduced back to nitrogen gas, whereby this nitrogen gas is going to enter into the atmosphere. So the Pseudomonas denitrificans bacteria are the bacteria which are responsible to facilitate the process of denitrification in the nitrogen cycle. Biology.